name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen. Come Holy Ghost, fill the hearts thy faith, and kindle in them the fire of thy love. Send forth thy spirit, and they shall be created. Let us pray, O God, and instruct the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Ghost. Grant that the light of the same spirit be always truly wise, and rejoice in his consolation through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Saint Joseph. Saint Teresa the Child Jesus. Saint Francis Xavier. Saint Peter Mary Chanel. Blessed Mary McKillop. Saint John Chrysostom. Saint Polycarp. Okay, the next section is on prayer. What is prayer? Uh, giving something to our Lord. No, it's not giving something to our Lord. Praying is adoring God. Uh, yes. Verbally That's not exactly is correct, no. It's Verbal. correct. Verbally and mentally. Yes. Or adoring God verbally and mentally, yes. Here it says prayer, and you should know this, I thought you already did know it, many probably knows it, is the lifting up of the heart and mind, mind of our minds and hearts to God. Only people with minds and hearts can pray. Do cows have hearts? Yes. Yes, they do. <laughs> do they have minds? Yes. No, they don't have minds. No, they don't have minds. So they can't. They can't pray. Cows don't pray. So who has hearts and minds? Human. Human beings. Don't they have a mind? The cows, like their brain. They have a brain, but they don't have a mind. No. And angels pray, even though they don't have hearts. Okay. It's not your physical heart. It's your Spiritual heart, your will, your love, acts of love. The heart symbolizes what? Love. Love, yeah. The heart symbolizes love. That's why we draw hearts, you know, and, uh, sometimes. You can see my registrations on the car. So it says, uh, so only angels and, and men can pray. So angels pray. And human beings pray, yes. Do angels have minds? They do. Yes. They do. Is mind, the mind basically the soul? No, the mind is not the soul. The soul is more than the mind. The mind is a power of the soul. How many powers does the soul have? You know? Don't be talking. How many powers does the soul have? Two. Two. What are they? The mind and the essence. The mind and the who? Senses? No. The senses are powers of the body. Is it the flesh and the will? It's not the flesh. The flesh is not part of the soul, is it? The soul is united to the flesh. Hmm? But it's we don't not. have any uh, markers. Somebody finished me. Or somebody put them away, is that it? Okay, so the soul has two powers, the mind and the will. The mind makes judgments. Okay. And then the will is the appetite of the mind. So the mind, for example, looks at the bowl of ice cream and says, I judge that ice cream is good. And the will says, well, if it's good, I want it. And so the will then says, I want it. So the will is the appetite of the mind. So if the mind judges God is good, then the, the will says, I want God. So it follows the mind. So the mind is more important because it's going to make correct judgments. If it makes false judgments, uh, then the, 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 the will gets led astray. So those are the two powers of the soul. And that's how we're in the image of God. 
God made us in his image, didn't he? Image of God. God is a spirit. Is the soul a spirit? Yes. It's a spirit. God is a spirit. God has a mind, doesn't he? And he has a will. Yes. So we're in the image of God that we have a, a soul that is a spirit with a mind and a will. Now, if we raise up our mind and our will to God, that's prayer. We lift up our minds to God by fixing the attention of our mind on Him. So if we're, if we're reciting the Hail Marys, and we've got our mind fixed on a bowl of ice cream, are we praying? No, no. Not really, no. No. Our lips are praying. Maybe. Our lips, but our mind isn't there. Not true prayer. That is prayer in some ways. You, know, you, get, you get some merit for it, but if you get more merit, if you uh, lift up your heart to mind. Let us lift up our hearts with our hands to the Lord in the heavens. Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. Who said that and when? Emily. Jesus, James, and God, and yeah, who do you say it to? To um, Peter, John, and James. That's right, very good. Agony Garden said that to the Peter, James, and John. Okay. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. Who, who said that? Jesus said to our lady. Oh. Not to our lady. Jesus said it, but not to our lady. Our lady will help her. To Saint Mary, to Pardon? No. Oh, he called her a woman, so first of all, it wouldn't be a man, all right? So who was the Samaritan woman? Very good, Benny. Yes, the Samaritan woman. Very good. He said that to the Samaritan woman. And our Lord said, Ask and you shall receive, that your joy may be full. St. Peter said, Be prudent and watchful in prayer. So why do we pray? Four reasons. We've already had these four things. They're the four ends of the Mass as well. So what are the four ends of the Mass, the four reasons we pray? What four things do we do with God? So we go to heaven. So we go to heaven? Yes. That's not correct. So the four reasons. What do we have to do with God? We've already said it. Somebody's already said it. Deny, love, and serve. Yes, but this Deny, love, and serve. Yes. So we just repeated what Benny said. So All right. Is it prayer? You know, why do we, the ends of prayer, the reasons for prayer. We've had this before, but you don't remember it. You remember it as soon as I tell you, I think. Somebody already said that one of the words today. What, what duty do we have to do to God? What is our duty to God? Adore. Adore first. The old love and service why God made us. This is the ends of prayer. One, to adore God. So we, we adore God when we pray. What's another thing we do when we pray? Respect. 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 What do we pray for? Uh, pray for good things. Uh, pray for the soul or something? Yes. Okay. For grace, yes. There's prayers of petition. What does petition mean? Um, penance? No, petition does not mean penance. Mercy? No, it doesn't mean mercy. Demand? Ask? Yeah, asking, yes, very good. It means to ask for things. May I pass the exam? Remember, I pray these three Hail Marys so I might pass the exam. Or I pray these three of Hail Mary so I might get this or that. See? Petition. Adoration. What else do we have to do? All right. You commit a sin. Um, contrition. Contrition, yes. Penance. Penance, yes. Love. Yes. Like you get three, three Hail Marys for your penance at confession. Pray for your penance. Absolution? Absolution? When we say reparation, what does reparation mean? 
repair something. Repair, yep. Yeah. Repair. So what do we got to repair? Yes. Reparation. And what else do we do? We've had all this before. Love. Oh. Um. Or if somebody gives you something, what do you say? Thank you. Thank you. Thanksgiving. But we owe God for everything. So we have to say prayers of thanksgiving. These are the four reasons we pray. Let's see what it says here. We pray first to adore God, expressing to Him our love and loyalty. You know loyalty, what that means? Be faithful. Yes, you're loyal to Him. You're not going to go off to some other God. Second, to thank Him for His favor. So they got to thank second. I got it fourth. Third, to obtain from Him the pardon of our sins and the remission of their punishment. That's reparation. The pardon of our sins and the remission of their punishment. What does remission mean? Rest. Remission doesn't mean to rest. To rescue. Rescue? No. To, 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 to pardon someone and forget what he's done? Pardon? To pardon? pardon someone and forget what he's done? No, that's not exactly what remission means. It means to take away. You, you take away. So to get rid of the, the punishment, take away the punishment, the remission of the punishment of the sins. See? So we do a prayer now rather than having to spend time in purgatory later. Okay? You say, Lord, I offer this up in remission of my sins, and you remit the sins now so you don't have to remit them later. That's the best thing to do. Because now you get merit for the prayer too. See? Or to ask for graces and blessings for ourselves and others. That's petition to ask. Is when you ask something. So it says prayer is a debt we owe God. What is a debt? Annoying? To owe someone? Yes. So we'd have to pray. We're obliged to pray. We owe God to pray. I think it's just he uh, is our Lord and Master, he's our benefactor. You know, that way. So some qualities of a good prayer. You should pray with attention. What does attention mean? It's that you're alert to listen. Yes, your mind is on what you're praying about. Attention. You're attentive to your prayers. So if you're praying about the first mystery of the rosary, you can be attentive to uh, the Annunciation. Think of the angel coming to Our Lady. Or you can think of the Hail Mary itself, which comes from the uh, angel anyway. If you're saying the rosary, can you ask for something, ask for grace, and think about something, and not the mystery? Pardon me? If you're saying... If you can ask for grace, you can offer this deck it up for and ask for a particular grace, yes? What do you mean? You're supposed to, supposed to say the meditation on the rosary. Uh -huh. I mean, if you're meditating about... Uh, 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 I don't know. The wedding feast of Cana... And you say, well, it's the first joyful mystery, the Annunciation. Uh, you're not really meditating on the mystery of the Rosary, are you? You're meditating on something else. Okay. Pray with attention, with a conviction. What does conviction mean? Con Angela. Thing? To be convinced. What does convinced mean? To tell someone to do it. Ah, uh, yes, that's what it means as a verb, convince someone to do something. That doesn't mean to tell them to do it. It means to make them want to do it, right? Mm -hmm. What does conviction mean? Conviction, I was going to say to make them want to do it. Yeah, well, that's correct. That's what convince means. But what does conviction mean now here? With conviction, you pray with conviction. With certitude or something. See? You're convinced. You are convinced. You're convinced that means you're, you're certain of something, right? And it says conviction of our own helplessness and our dependence upon God. So we need to pray because we can't do anything by ourselves. We're helpless and we're dependent upon God. So that's what the conviction. So attention. Conviction of our helplessness and dependence upon God. Third, with a great desire for the graces we beg of Him. So 
So if we're asking for something, Lord, help me to give up this vice, my, my bad habit. We should want to give up our bad habit then. See, some people don't want to give up their bad habits. They ask the Lord, help me overcome this bad habit, but they really don't want to. They're not, uh, they don't have a desire for that grace. They ask for a grace that they don't really want because they like their bad habit. See? So we have to have a great desire for the things we want. And with trust in His goodness and with perseverance. What does perseverance mean? Perseverance. To keep going. Keep going. Yes, you don't stop. So we pray every 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 day. Right? You ask for this grace today, and then if you don't get it today, you ask for it again tomorrow, and then if you ask for it another tomorrow, and maybe after uh, ten years you get it. Who knows? So you persevere and have confidence. Our Lord says, when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites. We love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners in order that they might be seen by men. So they receive their reward. Like the publican and the Pharisee? Yes. Not like the, well, well, which one do you want to not pray like? Um, the publican? Publican. You want to pray like the Pharisee pray. I mean, like the publican pray, you want to pray like the publican pray. You don't want to pray like the Pharisee pray, right? The Pharisee pray with humility. I mean, the publican prayed with humility. The Pharisee prayed with pride. All right. And our Lord says, Ask, and you shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened to you. We've been saying that in the prayer at the end of the litany of the holy name of Jesus uh, in these last uh, couple of weeks. Okay. For whom should we pray? For the Pope and the church. The Pope and the church. Our friends, our friends, the sick people, sick people, the people in purgatory, the souls in purgatory, family. Our Lord, pray for him. He doesn't need prayers. No, we don't pray for our Lord. No, don't be wrong. Pray for the conversions of sinners. Conversion of sinners, yes. The conversion of Russia. Conversion of Russia. It says here we should pray especially for ourselves, for our parents. Relatives, friends, and this is when you missed out your enemies. Enemies. You have to love your enemies. For sinners, you said that. For the souls in purgatory, you said that. For the Pope, bishops, and priests, did you say that? I think you did. I think you did, of the church. And for the officials of our country. So for your government. Government. So we're going to pray for them. It says in the book of Maccabees, It is therefore a holy and wholesome thing to pray for the dead, that they may loose from their sins. But I say to you, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who persecute and, and, persecute and calumniate you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven who makes his sun shine on the good and the bad, and sends rain on the just and the unjust. How do we know that God always hears our prayers if we pray properly? Because He's everywhere. Because He's just. Because He's just. Because He's everywhere. He's merciful. He's merciful. He loves us. He loves us. Because He told us. We just had it. Ask and you shall receive. Uh, he's got to hear the prayer if he's going to if he's going to answer it. We know that all our prayer. Here's our prayers. We pray properly because God has promised. If you ask the Father anything in my name, He will give it to you. So that's where the Lord said, "Ask in His name, and the Father will give it to you." So how do the prayers at the Mass end often? Not most sacred heart of Jesus. That's the end of the Mass. How do the prayers end? Um, you mean the last gospel? No, not the last gospel. I mean the, uh, the prayers. The last gospel is not a prayer. Are you talking about the praying at the foot of the altar? No, I'm talking about the colic prayer, the secret prayer, the post communion prayer, a lot of prayers. William? Is it the conversion of Russia? 
Through our Lord Jesus Christ, per Dominum Nostrum Jesum Christum, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Very good, Emily. Yes. So that's what our Lord said. That's why the church does that. Because our Lord said, if you ask the Father anything in my name, he will give it to you. So the Lord, the church always adds on to the prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ. Per Dominum Nostrum Jesum Christum, Filium Tuum, your son. Take a beam at it right now, and God is Spiritus Sancti Deus, who lives and reigns with you. Okay? So we always ask in the name of Jesus. The church always does. God is ever ready to grant our solitary petitions, but he requires us to ask him by prayer to do so. So does God know what we need? Yes. So why do we have to ask him then? Uh, why can't we just say in the morning, Dear Lord, give me everything I need today, please. Because God gives us a grace when we need it. Yes. He doesn't just provide us. He wants, he, wants us us he, wants to, he wants us to ask Him. He wants us to ask for it. Then He'll give it to us. Okay. That's a, so uh, that's a, something our Lord... If you don't ask for it, you might not get it. He wants us to ask for what we need. Why do we not always obtain what we pray for? What does obtain mean? Yes. Yes. All right. Why do we not always obtain what we pray for? Angela. Because it might not help us get to heaven. Yes. Our Lord doesn't want you to heaven. Maybe he wants you to ask more times too. It says here, we do not always obtain what we pray for, either because we have not asked properly. We haven't prayed properly. So to pray properly, we've got to have pray with attention, with the desire to have what we ask him for, with confidence in God that he can give it to us, all those things. Or because God sees that what we are asking for would not be for our good. Because that's not going to be good for you. Because sometimes we don't know what's good for us or not. So we ask for things that aren't good for us. Does God know what's best for you? Yes. yes. <clears throat> now what's a distraction? Something that disturbs you. Disturbs you? Not necessarily disturbs. That's not the correct word. Zachary? Is it if you're uh, saying a prayer and then this guy comes around and says, hey, look at this, look at this. Yeah, well that would be a serious distraction. Yes. That doesn't happen too often, no? Some, a distraction is something that turns you away or um, makes you stop thinking about what you're thinking. Yes, that's right. Distraction is a thought that comes into your mind about something else. So you're not lifting your mind. Prayers are lifting up the mind to God. And so if you get a thought about something else, and then you start thinking about that, you're no longer lifting up your mind to God, are you? That's a distraction. So it could be coming from another person. You see something, like you said, or you hear somebody say something while you're uh, while you're praying, and you start thinking about what they what you heard, or just something pops into your mind, or you remember something you have to do. It's, oh, remember I forgot to I forgot to do something. I forgot to turn off the tap in the kitchen. All the water's running out. So that's a distraction for you now. You're thinking, oh, the ring tank's going to empty. Okay. So, whatever it is, that any distraction is something that comes into your mind. Many distractions come from natural causes, like worry or anxiety. What's the difference between worry and anxiety? Anxiety is uh, something that just comes into your, something that you worry about, but it's a yeah, serious funny. sort of thing. Your worries about unconsciously. Unconsciously. You can worry unconsciously? Mm. I'm not aware I'm worried about it. No, I don't think that's true. <laughs> Anxiety seems to be close to seems to be pretty close to worry. I mean you're anxious about something, which means you're concerned about it. So it might be an ongoing thing. No? Or bodily afflictions. Mm -hmm. Your knees get sore. Something like that. Mm -hmm. Or you're it's hot. Or you're sweaty. Mm -hmm. You get distracted by bodily afflictions. Okay, so those are all distractions that they come from. Other distractions are temptations of the devil. Because the devil doesn't want you to pray. 
So he makes you uh, get tempted to something else, you to think about something else, and then you're not praying, see? The effort to overcome distractions makes our prayers even more pleasing to God. So we have to fight to overcome. Once we realize we're distracted, because sometimes you can be distracted and not realize it. You're thinking about something completely different, and then you go, oh, wait, I'm supposed to be praying now. And then you've got to bring your mind back to God and overcome that distraction. And that uh, makes our prayers pleasing to God. Since here, how many kinds of prayer are there? Two. Two. Very good. That's the correct answer. So there are two kinds of prayer. That's the correct answer. And then what does he say? He tells you what the two are. What are they? Verbal prayer and mental prayer. Very good. He's got mental prayer first, though. Mental prayer and vocal prayer. Vocal prayer and mental prayer. Yes. How can stuff like about cry out with an soul always, like the next number is two? Well, yeah, well, there's two types, of two ways, yeah, that's the, 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 the spiritual writers say two types of prayer. Mental prayer, where you pray with your mind. Vocal prayer, what do you pray with with your vocal prayer? Vocal. Your voice, yes, your lips. Okay. Can you do both at the same time? Mm -hmm. yeah, that's what we have to try to do. When we're doing vocal prayer, we've got to try to do mental prayer as well. If we're just doing mental prayer, we don't have to try and do vocal prayer. Like on first Saturdays, you spend 15 minutes doing what? Meditating on the mysteries. Are, and you're not supposed to be daydreaming that, are you? You're supposed to be meditating on the 15 mysteries of the rosary, or one mystery of the rosary. So that's what we've got to raise our mind up to God and think about these mysteries. So when I, when I do that, well, we just have 15 minutes and everybody does their own meditation. Father Pio says he gives a directed meditation. Where he gives you little hints about the mysteries in case you don't know the mysteries of the rosary. Mm -hmm. To help you to think about something. Mm -hmm. but that's what you want to do. Mm -hmm. 15 minutes of metal prayer. And uh, that's what the crusaders do when they make their 15 minutes of uh, silent metal prayer and put it on their treasure sheet. Mm -hmm. That's something you should try and do every day if you're a crusader. Yes? Father, if you're not a knight or handmaid, you're not obliged. You're not obliged to do that. I understand that. Yes, knights and handmaids are obliged to do it. But the ones who aren't knights and handmaids, and none of you are knights or handmaids. So you're, nobody here has an obligation to make the 15 minutes of uh, mental prayer. Yes? What about a crusader? The crusader doesn't have to do the 15 minutes of mental prayer. That's an addition when you get to be a knight or a handmaid. Okay, so mental prayer is that prayer by which we unite our hearts, which is our will, right? Our hearts, with God while thinking, our minds, we think with our mind, that's the work of the mind to think, while thinking of his holy truths. So think of some truths of the faith. I think about uh, the Holy Trinity. What great doctor of the church was meditating on the Holy Trinity and uh, an angel came to him, or our Lord came to him, or an angel came to him in the form of a boy? Satan's No. St. Augustine. St. Augustine was walking down the beach thinking about the Trinity and trying to understand how there can be three persons and one God and only one God and three persons. And he was meditating on this. And he came up to this little boy who was on the beach. What, what did the boy do, William? He said um, uh, something about... The boy had dug a hole. He had dug a hole and he had a bucket. And he, and he kept running down to the sea and getting a bucket of water and pouring into the hole. And then St. Augustine got distracted by that boy. That was a distraction for him. See? So he said, boy, what are you doing? And the boy says, I'm going to move the sea from over there into this hole. And St. Augustine said to him, boy, you can't fit the sea into that hole. And the boy said to St. Augustine, he says, i got a better, a better chance of fitting the sea into that hole than you have of fitting the Holy Trinity into your mind. Made St. Augustine know that he could not comprehend the Holy Trinity. And I just keep meditating on it. 
So that boy, that's an example of a distraction. St. Augustine was praying, then he sees this boy running back and forth from the sea with his bucket dumping the water, and that, that distracted him, and he wanted to say, oh, what are you doing, boy? That's interesting. Yes, yeah, so he got a distraction when he was praying there. Yes. But wasn't that boy really an angel? Yes, it was. And then he disappeared after we told him. Yes. That's correct. Yeah. What is vocal prayer? Yeah, it says here, vocal prayer is that prayer which comes from the mind and heart and is spoken by the lips. So you still got to be attentive to it. So you speak it by the lips. So it's out loud. Vocal prayer can be taken to mean all bodily prayer. All bodily prayer, such as genuflections. So a genuflection is a prayer. When you make your genuflection, what are you supposed to be doing? What are you supposed to be doing while praying? Doing, not playing. Praying. Praying, all right. Um, you could say, my Lord, my God. Genuflection is adoration, isn't it? Make an act of adoration of God. You could say, my Lord and my God, yes. That would be good. Yeah. So you're supposed to be thinking of adoring God here. Not just running across the church and well, I better genuflect as people are watching. Would you do a quick one? Down and up. Some people can genuflect pretty quick. Uh, so, uh, genuflections, the bowing of the head, in the name of Jesus or Mary, and you bow your head, that's a prayer. And that's considered to be a vocal prayer, because it's with the body, even though it's not with your lips. Mm -hmm. And the folding of hands, folding your hands. Mm -hmm. Also, like making the sign of the cross. Sign of the cross, that's a prayer. By vocal prayer, so it comes from the mind and heart and is spoken by the lips. So that's the definition. Vocal prayer, remember that. Prayer comes from the mind and the heart and is spoken by the lips. By vocal prayer, man recognizes. God's sovereignty over the whole man, body, and soul. What does sovereignty mean? Emily, what does sovereignty mean? Um, absolute monarchy. Pardon? Absolute monarchy. Absolute monarchy? Uh, that's, you're on the right track, definitely. Someone important, someone in a high position. No. No, someone with a, your sovereign. Who's your sovereign? The Pope. Yes. Mm, yes. Or is there something like a king or something? Yes. Like rain. See, it's got the word rain in it, doesn't it? The rain, what does the king do? The rain's over. So, like oh. Queen Elizabeth is the sovereign here. The titular, the titular sovereign, anyway. So that's why her picture's on the on the coins, isn't it? Some, it's on something anyway, a five dollar note. Hmm? Isn't there a coin called the sovereign in America? No, in England there was a sovereign, yes. Yes, that's right, very good. Yes. That's right, so that's, uh, you know, uh, when our Lord asked them, they gave him a coin, he says, whose image and likeness is this? I said, Caesar. said Caesar. So we said, give the Caesar what is Caesar. So if you look at the coin, it says, whose image is that? Well, it's the queen. See? So she's the sovereign. Okay. So sovereignty means the one who rules and reigns over you. And it says, we recognize God's sovereignty over the whole man, body, and soul. So we have to submit to God not only with our heart and mind, but also with our body. The Lord has reigned over all of us, or our, our, our total being. The use of the voice or the prayerful attitude of the body also excites greater fervor of soul. So if you're lounging in your lounge chair, yeah, okay, let's say the rosary, and you get your rosary out, and you're lounging in your lounge chair, and you got your glass of wine sitting there, and your cigarette over here, and you take a puff on your cigarette, and you say, Hail Mary, full of grace, and then you take a sip of wine, and, you know, uh, uh, we, don't, we don't pray very attentively that way. We're laying in bed. Some people say their rosary laying in bed. There's a danger you might fall asleep when you do that. 
Well, if you're sick, it's a lot, isn't it? Pardon me? If you're sick, it's a lot. Oh, yes. You, yeah, some people have to say the rosary for that. Some people are good at it, too. Some of the rosary for that. But it's, uh, the attitude of the body means the prayerful, the use of the voice or the prayerful attitude of the body. What do you mean by the attitude of the body? The way the body is positioned. That's correct. Very good, yes. The attitude of the body means the way the body is positioned. It also excites greater fervor of the soul. So if you're kneeling up straight, you know, that's a better position than if you're uh, squatting on your haunches or something like this, or uh, laying on the floor, like some uh, children do in the chapel, laying on the floor. They're not, uh, that's not a very good attitude of the body for prayer. For example, those who have difficulty in really meditating on the passion, often find it easy to make the stations of the cross. Okay, you look at each picture, you make the stations of the cross. It's easier to meditate on the passion of our Lord as you go from station to station. Except for if you look at the pictures too closely. Uh, somebody complained, we have two different Simon and Cyrenes here in our chapel. You know? Two different people. With one Simon on station one, and station one, one of the stations doesn't look as the same as Simon on the next station. It's a different, different man. Like you had a substitute. Okay. There are the sorrowful mysteries of the motor. Mm -hmm. Vocal prayer also makes prayer in common possible. So we can pray together and we pray vocally, like when we say the rosary before Mass. And that's common prayer. And common prayer is, that, uh, is, a, is a good uh, way to pray. Because what did our Lord say? Like common prayer. It says, when there's two or more of you there, I'm with you. Right. See? He didn't say just one. Well, if you're praying by yourself, you're praying by yourself. If there's two or more of you praying together, while well, our Lord's praying with you. So it's as if it's just you, he's not praying with you? Well, he, he, didn't, he, he said that there's two or more. He didn't say one. He said, if there's two or more, I'm praying with you. So he didn't say one. So. Common prayer has an advantage over just individual prayer. The prayer of the church is common prayer. Like the, the prayer the priest says. The divine the mass is common prayer. So even if nobody comes to mass and it's just the priest there saying mass, it's still the common prayer of the church. Right? And that's why we should unite to the masses going on. And the prayer, the, the breviary, the prayer we call the breviary, the office when the priest says prime, sext, or compline, or known, or vespers, or something, that's common prayer. If the saints, a lot of the saints prayed on their own. They did. But they prayed together as well, unless they were like hermits. You know, St. Anthony and Desert didn't have anybody to pray with. Some of them prayed with the animals then. They got the animals to pray with them when they were by themselves. So, right. But animals, we, we already said animals don't pray. So if you're a saint and you are just by yourself, you say the rosary by yourself, will God, will our Lord be praying with you if you're a saint? Well, I don't think it matters whether you're a saint or you're Zachary. Or either way, if our Lord's praying with you, but they might not be praying with you, but you'd be hearing your prayers. Okay. So common prayer is good. It's the prayer of the family. So there should be a family rosary where everybody in the family comes together to pray. It's important to have common prayer because, the, see, every creature has to give honor to God. Every creature has a duty to pray. Is the family a creature? Yes, it is. That's a different creature than the individuals. So the mother's a creature. The father's a creature. The son, the boy is a creature, the other 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 boy is a creature, and the girl is a creature. All right? So they're all creatures. But the family is a different creature. So the whole family should get together. The whole family has a duty to honor God and to pray too. That's why there should be family prayer. And that's why we have to have prayer together in the parish, in the congregation. That's, a, that's another creature. And that creature has to give God honor and glory to and pray to him. Yes, Benny? I forgot what I was going to say. All right. Okay. 
you know, when we were little, and we said, I forgot, my mother would always say, remember what Father Pomponi in some sermon said about forgetting. And this Father Pomponi would preach a sermon about forgetting. And my mother always said, remember what Father Pomponi said about forgetting. And she'd been saying this for years. And then one of the pastors said, no, we don't remember. What did he say, Mother, about forgetting? My mother had forgotten what he said. <laughs> but Father Pomponi said something about forgetting, that you should not forget something. What he said, we don't remember. May we, may we use our own words in praying to God. May we use our own words in praying to God. Yes. Yes, of course. We may use our own words in praying to God as well do so often. And that's what we do when we make mental prayer too. We don't have to necessarily do mental prayer to say the Hail Mary in our mind. We lift up our mind to God and we think and we, we get an idea to ask for something. Lord, I need this. Or Blessed Mother Mary, I need that. Or we get we, we realize some something they gave us and we get an idea to thank them for this. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. And so, yes, we can use our own words when we pray. What are the prayers that every Catholic should know by heart? William. Um, morning offering. Morning offering. Um, not time prayers. Nighttime prayers? What prayers are those? Is it every? Um, I was saying, going to say something about the prayer that they should know. Yeah, which prayer should we know? That's the question. Faith, hope, and charity? Yeah, acts of faith, acts of faith hope, and charity. The glory, um, the glory be the Hail Mary and the Apostle. Um, yes. The, the creed? The creed, yes. The glory? The rosary, I know the rosary's got individual prayers. Confidia? Confidia, yes. Those are the prayers we should know by heart. Very good. You missed one. What other act? The Act of Contrition. The Act of Contrition. What were you going to say? The Angelus. The Angelus. The Act of Contrition. Okay. So it says here, the prayers every Catholic should know by heart are the Our Father, the Hail Mary, the Apostles' Creed, the Confidior, the Glory Be to the Father, the Acts of Faith, Hope, Charity, and Contrition. So that's the minimum. The prayers you should all know by heart. Now you don't have to know the prayer to St. Joseph by heart. It's kind of a long one. If you know it by heart, that's good. How do we usually begin and end our prayers? Amen. Then, and starting with the sign of the cross and ending with the sign of the cross. Very good. Yes. We usually begin and end our prayers with the sign of the cross. Just like you said. It's exactly correct. Why do we make the sign of the cross? This is a harder question. Benny. To, sign, uh, to show that we are praying to God now? Yes. That we are, to show that we are praying to the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost? Yes. So that we believe in God? Yes. That's correct. Which, which mysteries of faith do we express by making the sign of the cross? The Holy Trinity. The Holy Trinity, yes. What else? The crucifixion of our Lord. Yes, the redemption. Yes, the crucifixion. That our Lord died for us. So we we show that's a, that's an expression of belief in those two mysteries. So we say in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost, and we make the cross on us. And the sign of the cross is the sign of the Christian. How are these mysteries expressed by the sign of the cross? When we say in the name. We express the truth that there is only one God. So we don't say in the names. If you say in the names, it's wrong. In the name, in one name. When we say of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, we express the truth that there are three distinct persons in God. And we make the form of the cross in ourselves. We express the truth that the Son of God made man, redeemed us by his death on the cross. So those are important things about prayer. And mental prayer is very important. All the spiritual writers say we should make mental prayer. So we've got to train our mind. You've got to train your mind to control it. So 
I try to make mental prayer. <coughs> Some people have a hard time with mental prayer. I think it was actually St. Teresa of Avila said she always needed to use a book when she made mental prayer. So to read a little something that some of the saints have written down or something like this and then think about it. That's the way you can make mental prayer. Read a sentence out of a, a, a holy book or out of the Bible or the gospel and read a sentence out of the gospel and then think about it uh, for a couple of minutes and then read another sentence and think about it. So that's the way to make mental prayer, to give you something to think about. If you, if, you're, if your mind's kind of, there's not much in your mind, if your mind's empty, so then you put something in there and say, okay, i got a sentence in my mind, now I'm going to think about that sentence. Mm -hmm. so that's, uh, that's good to do. And, you know, the, the religious orders offer, have a rule, they require so much, so much time in mental prayer uh, by the monks or the nuns. The vocal prayer is good too. What are what are some of the vocal prayers besides the rosary? The Angelus. The Angelus. Prayer to Saint Joseph. The prayer to Saint Joseph. Memorari. Memorari. Uh, then we have the litanies. The Hail Holy Queen. The Hail Holy Queen. The Mass. Pardon me. The Mass. Uh, the Mass. Yes. But do you speak during the Mass? Sometimes. You do? Or you sing? You don't speak during the Mass, do you? Mm -hmm. I hope not. No. I think she means the server. Oh, the server. Okay, at Mass, if it's a low Mass, the altar boy is designated to represent all the faithful. And that's why if the altar boy mispronounces a word, you can get angry with him. If he's representing you. Mm -hmm. If he leaves out a word, you say, you're representing me, you're supposed to be speaking on my, half, my behalf, you have to say it right. So that's why Ultra Boy has to learn well how to serve Mass and say it correctly because he's speaking on behalf of everybody else. Okay. Well, at low Mass. At High Mass, well, we sing the common. And St. Pius X said everybody should learn how to sing the common parts. Which are the common parts of the Mass? That you sing. Um, the Kyrie Eliasson. Eli the Gloria. The Gloria. The Cradle. The Cradle. Sanctus. Sanctus. Don't miss what it's called. That's quite bad. The Denizet. 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 And St. Pius X said, with a sung mass, all the faithful should know how to sing those common parts. But and then the proper parts, like the introit and the uh, uh, prayer, the communion prayer, those things change every, every Sunday. So, yeah, so that's why uh, the school has to practice them. You have to practice them ahead of time, the ones that are going to sing those and learn those. So everybody doesn't sing those, just the ones that have practiced them. And learn them because they take practice every week, so you gotta practice all the time when you're singing the mass. Zachary. Um, and the other boys are giving to communion. Uh, do we use to sing? Like that? No, the altar boys aren't supposed to sing. Like they're serving. Uh -huh. uh, we've got other work to do. The altar boys have other work to do besides singing. But you could sing. Sometimes you could join the glory when you're sitting down. Um, the people, people are supposed to sing, yes. Some of them do. Some do, some don't. But just just the scola, like uh, you know, the scola, we have maybe one or two people in the scola, maybe three here. They're supposed to practice ahead of time to enjoy from that and then sing that because there's a lot of uh, singing it takes practice because it's different every 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 Sunday, and so everybody doesn't practice that. Okay? So that's a when you sing, and there's an expression. I don't know where it came from. He who sings prays twice, so you get double credit when you're singing, rather than if you're just saying it. So like uh, I think is it uh, 
Joseph likes to sing the glory at the end of the hill, at yes. the deck, doesn't he? Yes. Yes. Do the altar boys get double credit if they serve him? They do, yes. They get the next, after the priest, they get the more graces from the mass. Yeah, because they, they take a greater part in it. But they have triple instead, Father? Well, triple or quadruple. All right, yes. Christian and Anna. Yeah, they're going to be good singers, yes. Okay. They need a little more practice. All right. Oh, so, it's, it's a duty to go to Mass and it's a duty to pray. What does a duty mean? You have to do it. Something you have to do. So, prayer is our duty. And it's something we have a privilege of being able to pray, but it's also our duty to pray. Okay. Any questions on that? No. no. Father, how yeah. much grace does the priest get? That depends. We don't know how much grace anybody gets exactly. All right. But the priest takes the biggest, biggest part in the great mass, so he gets the biggest grace, yes? All right. Colette's oldest sister is a nun in the convent. Colette says that her sister makes meditation twice every day. What is meditation? Thinking about the mysteries. No, yeah, it's not necessarily mysteries. Thinking about something. Yes, it's raising your heart and mind up to God, isn't it? Raising your heart and mind up to God, but it's not vocal. Just in the heart and mind is inside. Huh? Yes. Helen is trying to persuade the members of her family to recite the rosary in common every evening. Can you suggest any arguments for her to make it easier for her to convince them? Um, if you said the graces? Yeah, she needs graces, yes. Um, if each of us says the together, we'll have. Okay, here's a good one. Rocco bets Dunstan that he knows more ejaculatory prayers by heart than he does. What's an ejaculatory prayer? Something like the Mosaic Baptist. Yes, a little short, a little short, they call those ejaculations, a little short prayer. And Dunstan, Rocco thinks he knows more than Dunstan does, and I bet who knows the most prayers. Mm -hmm. Dunstan accepts the wager. Florella, Fiorello, the judge, who decided the winner, suggests they both write out from memory ejaculations they know. Each writes it out as this and hands it to Fiorello. Neither wins because each of them wrote out nine ejaculations. Can you write out ten? You think you can write out 10 or you can try that for homework then? Yeah. 10 ejaculations, declaratory prayers, or these guys can only write out 9. Okay, so let's see how much time we got. Oh, we better stop now then. All right. We'll uh, pray. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. And the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.